<laughs> it happened. Folks, uh, coming to you from the stunning Copper Coast in County Waterford, specifically Benvoy Beach, it's called. And I'm here to shoot sunset. Like my previous sunset uh, shoot, we've got a thick layer of hazy low cloud on the horizon that um, I think will mute all colour. However, I'm still here and I will still hopefully get a shot that I like. I was out this morning taking photos and it was an absolutely fantastic sunrise. A um, few phone shots there, just I just snapped them very quickly just to see the colour in the sky. And uh, yeah, phenomenal oranges and pinks in the sky and um, this is the image I captured. <laughs> yeah, a black and white shot. Um, and probably one of the best sunrises of 2019 so far. But, there's method to my madness. That particular shot lends itself very well to black and white, particularly with the way the tree is isolated on the hill, and the light just hitting the top of the mountain illuminating the tree. And it just looks a lot better than the green hill contrasting with the coloured sky. So yeah, that's my photo from this morning. And, I wasn't planning on shooting sunset, but when I looked at the weather and the radar, it said 70% high cloud, um, but 10% middle cloud and hardly no, cl no cloud at all, about 2%. So I said, why not? Yeah, I've never been here before, and it's a fantastic beach. It kind of reminds me of the black sand beach in Iceland in a way, because the sand is really, really dark grey colour. And the tide, unfortunately, isn't with me at the moment, but I imagine on a full tide, you get some pretty cool shots with the white form receding away on that black sand. However, I'm still going to have a look around and find the composition. I'm thinking, like your typical seascape shot, it'll be rocks in the foreground with um, some waves swirling in around them. And, um, yeah, but the rocks have really nice textures and patterns on them that I think even if we don't get a nice sunset, it could lend itself to a decent shot. No matter what the conditions, it's always nice to get out. And there's a saying that if you can, do. So I could get out to Stephen, so I did. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look around and we'll see what we can find. As you probably know by now from these videos, I'm always trying to find something different, something really creative. Um, just something different aside from your typical shots. 
Um, as fantastic as they are, I love to try and find something unique. And I was walking out to get to the rocks where the waves are rushing in from. And I just spotted this. It's like a little uh, ravine, I suppose, in between two rocks. Uh, in between the rocks that are revealed at low tide, I should say. And there's just a pool of water in between them as well. And the light was just catching the rocks really nice. And I thought that would be a nice vertical composition. So I've settled on that and I have a polarizer on just to remove some of that glare and bring out some contrast. I haven't it fully polarized because I want the light to show on the rocks, but I have it polarized a bit. And you can do that, that's no problem. You don't have to fully polarize it, just slightly turn it, get that glare off, but still keep that light intact. And I'm at F8. I'm gonna shoot two different exposures. Um, as I always do, one for my highlights, one for my shadows. Um, generally, generally the shadows kind of mid tones covered in the one shot. I rarely have to use three exposures. Generally, two is fine. And there isn't much color in the sky, but there's some nice golden tones, and I think that'll re make a really nice shot. You know, so I'm gonna grab this while the light is while the light is good, and. Let's hope that that hazy low cloud moves off. So we're getting some lovely light right now and it's just reflecting off those rocks and the pools of water that the low tide has left are perfectly still so they're reflecting the, the colour and it's actually quite nice. Obviously I have main foreground interest, there's very little of the sky in the shot because the interest is in the foreground and capturing those lovely rocks, those real nice textures, those patterns that at this hour of the evening the light can illuminate and really bring out. And any photographer that asks me how can I make my images, how can I make my images better, um, well one of the first things I say is just go out and shoot, um, no matter what conditions. I know I'm always raving about uh, conditions aren't good, conditions are excellent, but when you're starting out, it's imperative that you just go out and use the camera, shoot. Another thing I always say is learn the importance of light and how light can just lift a scene. And it's 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 just so important. Um, understand how light works, how light, how you can use light in your favour and how it works in different scenes. And you're really, you're on a winner then. This is nice. This is very nice. there it would be it would be lighting up it might still there's some middle cloud just catching the slightest hint of orange it's a more yellowy color at the moment it's there and I'm hoping it happens quickly because the tide is coming and soon my camera will be underwater just giving it about 10 minutes more and because the sun has gone down and uh, like I said in the last video, I was waiting about 10 or 15 minutes after the sunset just to see if that colour will come. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen.
here, as you can tell, it happened. I couldn't, couldn't be happier. Absolutely over the moon. Because, as I say, there was just that thick layer of hazy cloud on the horizon and all of a sudden it just went and bang. Absolutely phenomenal. I had to take the, so the first competition I was looking at, unfortunately, I had to take my tripod out of there because it was submerged in water by the time the colour popped off. And that's unfortunate because that would have been a phenomenal shot with the sky that we got. But I did get, um, I'm still very happy with that shot. And I literally moved five feet to the left of me and set my tripod up nice and low. There was some rocks in my, there was some rocks just in my foreground. I got the typical seascape shot where you have the water swirling in around the rocks and you have the sky in the background. And I really liked it because I captured that motion again. I didn't blur out all the water. I had just a polarizer on. So I was shooting about a sixth of a second, captured that motion, fired off about 20 or 30 shots. I'll pick the nicest one. And I had the sea stacks just to the right of the frame and just catching that light as well. And obviously I had the fantastic sky. Shame on me for for being negative earlier on and just Yeah, shame on me. Always be always be hopeful. Because that was that was a great end to the day. Absolutely fantastic. Worth the two hour drive down. I've been going since about quarter to five this morning. Um but I don't care. I lost my shutter release. That's the second one I'm after losing a dim. I always leave them in my pocket and when I take out my filters it drops into the ocean and but it doesn't matter. It was so worth it. And yeah. I'm just gonna just gonna finish it there. As you can see, I probably don't put together the best vlogs in terms of fluidity. But I'm getting there I think. Um I said I wasn't feeling it earlier on today. But, you know I just wasn't but when 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 you get scenes like that then it just makes it all worthwhile. Literally everything else disappears and you're just there with your camera in the moment. So what a fantastic scene, what a fantastic evening, what a fantastic place and hopefully you'll enjoy the images. So until the next time folks, um, thanks very much for watching and stay safe. Thank you.